Okay, so we have a model for adsorption. Uh, this lattice model where molecules can either be adsorbed in one of these lattice sites on the surface or up in the gas phase. We've written down a partition function for what the uh, partition function looks like when n of the molecules are stuck to the surface with an energy of epsilon for each one of them out of the total m different surface sites in total. So if we want to understand how many molecules are adsorbed to the surface or how that depends on the experimental uh, parameters like pressure and temperature, the easiest way to proceed would be to say, since we're going to have an equilibrium, based on what we know about equilibrium, we can say the chemical potential of the, the molecules in the gas phase must be equal to the chemical potential of the molecules adsorbed to the surface when the system is at equilibrium. So we can understand what each one of these is. In the gas phase, we know the chemical potential of a gas. Standard state chemical potential plus KT log of the pressure of that gas over the standard pressure, the pressure at which this is the chemical potential. In our case, mainly to make things simpler, qualitatively simpler, we're going to assume we're working under conditions where the standard state chemical potential is zero, so we can ignore that term. Basically, we've chosen a zero of energy such that the chemical potential is zero in for the gas in its standard state. For the adsorb species, we can also write down a chemical potential. That's going to turn out to involve a little bit more work. The chemical potential of anything is derivative of one of the energies with respect to the number of molecules. So remember, we're talking about the number of molecules adsorbed on the surface is capital N. So we want to take the derivative of a, uh, an energy, maybe energy or enthalpy or Gibbs free energy, or in this case, Helmholtz free energy, with respect to number of molecules. We can take the derivative with any energy we want, as long as we're careful to hold the right things constant. A, the Helmholtz e free energy, is going to be easiest to write from our partition function. So I'll take dA dN. We just have to make sure and do that. Normally, we would say dA dN at constant temperature and volume, if we were talking about a three-dimensional system. But in this case, since the system we're talking about is the molecules stuck to this surface, this two-dimensional surface, the two-dimensional surface doesn't have a volume. It has an area. And the way we're characterizing the area of the surface is in the total number of sites that the surface has. If I double the surface area of this uh, surface to which the molecules are adsorbing, I'm doubling the total number of sites to which the molecules can absorb. So I'm going to want to do this derivative at constant t and constant m. This is the equivalent of the volume for the system that we're talking about. So like I said, that's going to take a little bit of work to figure out what dA dN is equal to. So let's start working on that. If we know a partition function, we can calculate a Helmholtz free energy. It's minus kT log Q. Since we know what, k, uh, what Q is, I can write the Helmholtz free energy as minus kT times the log of, of this term, this partition function. I've got various terms being multiplied and divided. so. I'll break apart that product of, of uh, terms. The log of this product is going to be the sum of a bunch of logarithms. So I've got log of m factorial in the denominator. So with the negative sign, I've got log of n factorial. And I've got a m minus n factorial. So I've got also in the denominator, log of m minus n factorial. And lastly, I've got the log of this e to the minus n epsilon over kt. So log of e to something is just the exponent n epsilon over kt. All right. So that's what I've got for the Helmholtz free energy. Seeking a log of something factorial makes 
you think hopefully that we should be using Stirling's approximation, and that's what we'll do next. So log of m factorial using Stirling's approximation is m log m minus m. Log of n factorial is n log n minus n, the negative sign turns that into negative n log n minus a negative n. Likewise, minus log of m minus n factorial is minus m minus n log m minus n minus a negative m minus n. And I still have this minus n epsilon over kt. All right, so now that's simple enough that it's uh, expanded enough that we can start to simplify it a little bit. Uh, looks like I have a minus m term here and a positive m term there that are going to cancel. I've got a positive n and a negative n that are going to cancel. Uh, and that's all I've got that's going to cancel for the moment. Uh, so I'll just leave that. That's my expression for the Helmholtz free energy. Can't simplify that too much more. Helmholtz free energy is not really what I was after. In order to do this equilibrium problem, I need to take the derivative of the Helmholtz energy with respect to n. So let's go ahead and do that. If I take dA dn at constant t, because there's some temperatures that show up here, and at constant m, which is our equivalent of volume, that's going to be kt. So the m terms, m's being held constant, so these derivative of this term goes away because m is constant. Derivative of minus n log n, I've got using the product rule minus log n if I take the derivative of this n, and if I take the derivative of the log term, minus n, leaving that one alone, derivative of log is 1 over n. Similarly, I can take the derivative of this term minus m minus n log m minus n with respect to n. So taking the derivative of the first term, minus minus n becomes positive 1 times log m minus n. If I leave the m minus n alone, so I've got minus m minus n derivative of log m minus n is 1 over m minus n. But chain rule with the negative sign in front of that n means I need to bring out another negative sign. And lastly, derivative of minus n epsilon over kt with respect to n gives me minus epsilon over kt. And again, we've got some cancellation that's going to happen. n over n is 1 with a negative sign. m minus n over m minus n is 1 with a positive sign. So this entire term cancels this entire term. So what I've got now is minus kt times, so I've got two different log terms, negative log n and positive log m minus n. So I'll, I'll combine those, the sum of these two logs, or in this case the difference of these two logs, becomes the log of a quotient. So on top with the positive sign, I've got m minus n. And then the bottom with the negative sign, because of this negative sign, I've got the n. So I've combined those two log terms to look like this. And I'll just leave the minus epsilon over kt alone. All right, one more simplification to make. That's, that's you might think we can distribute this kt inside the brackets here. We could, certainly could do that, and it might make it look a little bit more simple. But I'm going to save this kt because I know it's going to end up canceling that kt. Uh, the one other simplification that we can make is if we take a look at these variables, m and n, those are both extensive quantities in our problem. m is the total size of the surface, the number of lattice sites on this surface. N is the total amount of molecules that are stuck onto that surface. So what's more useful uh, experimentally to think about is not the total number of molecules on the surface, but what fraction of the molecules on the surface 
what fraction of the sites on the surface are occupied by molecules. So if a total of n molecules occupy n sites, that's the fraction of, of sites that are occupied on the surface. So we'll call this the surface coverage. That's the variable we're going to often prefer to work with. If every lattice site is occupied by a molecule, then the surface coverage would be 1 or 100 percent. If there's no molecules on the surface, n is 0, so that's 0 percent. So somewhere between 0 percent and 100 percent coverage is this ratio. So since n over m is a useful thing to calculate, let's rewrite this fraction, m minus n over n. Let's take each one of the terms in that fraction and divide it by m. So on the top, I've divided by m. On the bottom, I've divided by m. And that's all I've done in this rewriting. And then now that I've got n over m showing up, I can rename that to be theta, my surface coverage. m over m is, of course, just 1. So this fraction becomes 1 minus theta on the top, theta on the bottom. So that's what I've got for DADN which is the chemical potential of the adsorbed species. So now I can go back to, after all this work on the side, I can go back to this statement that the chemical potential of the gas, this term involving the pressure, must be equal at equilibrium to the chemical potential of the adsorbed species, the term that I've just obtained over here. So that tells us chemical potential of gas, KT log P over P naught must be equal to this term minus kt log 1 minus theta over theta minus epsilon over kt. All right. That, so far, so good. As promised, a kt over on this side will cancel a kt over on this side. And now I will bring this negative sign in and distribute it inside these brackets. And I think this will probably be the last rewriting of this equation. I'll get log of p over p naught on the left. Negative log. Instead of writing negative log, I'll flip the uh, argument of the logarithm. So it's positive log of the inverse of this fraction, theta over 1 minus theta. And the negative sign applied to this epsilon over kt term turns it into a positive epsilon over kt. All right. So that is probably a good place to stop for the moment. What we've obtained at this point is a useful equation. This tells us a relationship between the pressure, this gas of molecules that are not adsorbed on the, onto the surface, has some pressure. We're doing this experiment at some temperature. The molecules, when they bind, have some binding energy epsilon, and a certain fraction of the surface will be covered by molecules. So depending on which variable we want to solve, we can understand how the surface coverage depends on the pressure and the temperature, or we could understand how the pressure depends on the surface coverage and the temperature. Here's a nice uh, thermodynamic relationship between the pressure, the temperature, and what fraction of the surface is occupied by molecules. So, we, um, what to do with that, we'll explore what that equation means and what it tells us about this adsorption process a little more in the next video.